on clearing the clutter inside and out, we are talking with kids who have decluttered and organized. What are kids really thinking? Do they want to clear clutter? Learn from a child's perspective how clearing clutter changed their lives. Let's continue our month focusing on back to school with the wisdom of children who have cleared clutter. Are you overwhelmed by clutter? Looking to organize your life? Do you feel stuck and are ready for a change? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer and coach Julie Caraccio on clearing the clutter inside and out as she supports you in navigating the waters of decluttering your life and getting organized. Julie thinks outside the box and examines clutter in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, and more. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? All right, everyone, this is very casual. We're at the last day at the beach. I've convinced my niece, maybe the other niece and nephew are gonna join us, but back in January, the end of January and early February, I went to West Virginia to help my nieces and nephew and brother and sister-in-law get organized. And I thought, what a great thing to have for our month discussing children to talk to children who have organized. You have actually seen Claire and Max before when they were a bit younger, and they talked about how having everything needs to have a home, and we did that for a special podcast. So here they are, a little bit older, a little bit more wiser. I think it's really important to instill early on good habits for kids in decluttering as well as organizing, because many people that I have worked with didn't receive that as children and now are challenged in that way as an adult. Okay, so let's get started. I'd like to introduce my niece, Claire. Hey, Claire. Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you on computer. We are recording this, so we're doing this. We're, again, you know, a little bit a little bit different this, but this was such an important subject, and since we don't live in the same state, this is how we're doing it. So, Claire, talk a little bit about the experience. What was it like working with me? And they've been told they need to be on their best behavior. They can be a little wacky then. But what was it like decluttering? What did that feel like, whether it was your room or – when we did the basement with toys, you go ahead and talk. Well, I don't like cleaning up, and I'll just say it out there. But when my aunt, my aunt Julie came over, she made it have a fun way, and I actually found out that we had a lot more space in our house instead of just Barbie dolls and little toy cars, decluttering or and everything going around and then once in about um, maybe a couple of days, a week or so, I saw that we had about a couple more feet of space that we can play with. So I want to talk to you. One of the things when we were in the basement and we were letting go of toys, there was a cape that Max had that had a big M on it. And you tried to get Max, one of the rules I put down was each child would make a decision on, on their items. But what did, do you remember what we talked about with memories and the and the cape of M for math. Can you share that with everyone? So my brother, as she said, had a little cake cake that had a big M on it. It brought me back memories and I really liked it. My he used to put it on all the time and I always thought he looked so cute in it now. But then he wanted to give it away. I kept begging him and begging him to let him keep it stay, but he didn't want to. So then my Aunt Julie, she, she told me about how people are decide, other pe- the people who own the stuff, they're deciding on to let it go or to keep it stay. You remember we talked about the memory? What did I say about the memory? Do you remember memory that? The memory will always be in here. And she's pointing to her heart. We have this on podcast. Yeah. We're doing video on podcast, so it's in your heart, and where else is it? It's also in your brain. It's in your brain, right. Yes. So then if we saw the memory, then we can let it go. Yes. Now, one thing also that you talked about that I thought was really interesting that you said to mommy was, ah, my room feels different. And mommy said, good or bad, different. You said, good. And you said that to the next day when we finished. Can you talk a little bit about how your room felt different? What did that mean to you? Well, I felt like my room was completely different. Everything was redone. I had spaces that were all the way on the left side, moved to the right, and I saw that it was actually better that way. 
everything was moved except for the heavy things like my bed. I just felt like it was way more clean even though the carpet is really dirty. It was really, it felt just cleaner and lots of more room for me to breathe air instead of stuff just piling up all the way up here, uh, right here. Now I have a question. What would you say, a parent is probably going to be listening. I don't think children, kids listen to my podcast. What would you say to a parent to encourage their child to get them to declutter, get organized? Well, speaking from a kid myself, some kids would maybe like, after their whole house is clean, they would like to go out for a treat, maybe to an ice cream parlor. Also, you could have 10, 5, 10 minutes off, and they can do whatever they want, like play outside or something like that. Anything that, you know, what kids like to do. Is there anything special that your kid likes to do? Like maybe pass around a football or just read. You can let them do that for a couple minutes, and then when it's time to go back, they'll come They'll go and they'll clean up more and they'll always, they'll try to do it faster so they can get their five, 10 minutes off. Very wise, wise advice. Now you talked about how your room feel felt cleaner. Are there any other benefits you've noticed personally when you've decluttered or gotten organized, whether it's you've been able to find something like if you're going on a sleepover and find some, talk a little bit about that. Lots of things get lost in our house. Well, they did. Like, we couldn't find a Nerf bullet, or th there's an accessory that's missing from one of my little sister's Barbie dolls. Well, we cleaned it up, and actually, we found a lot more stuff. Maybe we've uncovered about 15 bullets for my brother's Nerf, and we found a lot more stuff, including my missing... And we... My miss Go ahead. Well, I was going to also remember, we also designated a, for special items. One thing, Claire was a rock star the entire time. We had a special necklace that her grandmother had given to her. And Claire knew exactly where that was because you had designated a special place. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I think I can. So there is a very special necklace. I really liked it. I thought it was really pretty and it was really neat. You had stored it in up, it was, you have shelving, so you had picked a pretty box to store it. So when I said, hey, do you know where Jen Jen's necklaces? Boom, you went right to it. So I may ask you this. That's okay, it's all good. We're having fun here. It's all about having fun. If, what would you say to a child, maybe the parent's going to play this podcast for them, what would you say, hey, it's really great if you declutter, or get organized, and it helps you. What would you say, like if you're talking to your friend Olivia? Okay, well kids out there it's really important to clean up after your toys and especially if you do it for about a week or so you'll notice your house is really different and it's easy to find stuff you have more playroom and it's just a better house and instead of your parents going oh don't break that go downstairs and there's not enough room well bam in about a week or so everything is cleaned up so you can actually listen to your parents and not think Oh, they're being like that old hag, which from that fairy tale story. All right, so I have, she made me laugh there at the end, so I, I lost my train of thought. What have you noticed? Because one of the things when we went up, we worked on the basement, so I worked with Claire, Max, and Emma, and also with my brother and sister-in-law. Have you noticed a difference when we help Mommy? Has it help, have things help with Mommy having less clutter and being organized? Yes, now she's more peaceful instead of her face blowing up like a balloon and her face turning like a cherry red tomato. Um, now she is, now she's more calm. She takes things better because she usually always got mad when we didn't clean up after her stuff. Now she's not like that anymore. She's more calm, like I said before, and she's just a better person all around. Did you start to get organized but got stuck? Need some questions answered or customized suggestions? Simply looking for a professional organizer to bounce some ideas? Our online Ask a Professional Organizer office hours gives you the chance to ask award-winning professional organizer Julie Caraccio questions about decluttering and organizing for your home, life, office, and more. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Now, one thing I like to ask guests is, what would you like people to take away from this interview with you today? What can kids 
know or learn or need to know about the clutter and getting organized? What do you want them to remember the most? I think you guys should really remember that fifth, that 10, five minutes off instead of your kids want, in case you want to add whining to the business, then you'd want to remember that. And so your kids are just happy when they do it instead of complaining. Like sometimes I do and sometimes my brother and my sister do. Another thing to remember too is we can have collections, like Claire loves stuffed animals, but the thing is she loves stuffed animals and books, but not to love stuffed animals, books, nail polish, Legos, to not have collections of everything. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's important to minimize, or is that the right word? Mm -hmm. To minimize um, all your collections, see what's most important to you, see which are most useful, and then choose about if you maybe your top two, three, and keep those and the rest. You can maybe have a yard sale and get some awesome money so you can spend more on adding to your collections. And then the other great thing that we did, did we donate a lot to children's services? Yes, we did. I had a bunch of stuff that I really cared for, but I decided I didn't really need it, so I decided to give it away to charity. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, Claire, do you want to tell everyone anything that you'd like to share with yourself for the listeners? You're a writer, poet, poet, actress, and surfer, and 10. Sure. I'm 10 years old. I'm about to be 11 on June 15th. You can comment below and say, happy birthday, Claire. Um, I like to write a lot. I won a couple of awards for writing. Even my school gave me a gift card to one of these writing places. Um, I like to write poetry a lot. It's really fun, and you can have different ideas to do it. Actress, I think this is probably the most important one. I have been in about four or five plays, including my school plays, but I've also done some town plays, and those were really fun, and I got a lot of compliments on how awesome I was. You can see my middle name is awesome. And then the surfer, it's more of a boogie boarding, but I prefer to put surfer down there just because um, I really like going against the waves, being put, pulled under sometimes, and also just riding the waves and feeling like you're having the best time of your life. And that's all about me. Oh, and also, I think I'm pretty awesome at these interviews. Wouldn't you say so? I would say wonderful job, 10-year-old here. Now, do you want to, um, this was great. Our second guest today is my nephew, Max, who is nine, going on 10 way too quickly. So, Max, do you want to share a little bit about the experience when I came up and we decluttered and got organized? What was your experience like? My experience was... It was new to me because I'm not really a big fan of cleaning clutter. But this was a good experience for me because now I know that I will have to do that a lot. So I would like to thank my aunt for teaching me. I'll have to do that a lot and helping me get through the first few steps. Now, do you remember when we were in the basement and Claire tried to keep your Max cape with the M? And yes. I said that you had, that was your decision, but we talked about memories. Do you remember what we talked about memories? Yes, we said, so you said, you, so you, you hold up, you hold up the cape and said, do you, you said, do you remember this now? And he, and you said, and she said, yes. And you held it behind your back and said, do you remember this now? And she, and you, and she said, yes. You're like, see, those are memories. You'll, even though you don't have it, you'll still remember it. Very good. Now, do you have any thoughts? How did it feel after we decluttered and got organized? Did it feel better? Yeah, it felt better because I could find almost everything but had. Now, did you notice a difference with mommy and daddy with decluttering and getting organized? What do you mean by that? So, I mean, did once we decluttered, did mommy seem less stressed or was she able to yes, find yes. things? Yeah, both my parents were less stressed and I think it was better for all. We were all less stressed and... It was good, but then after a few, the first few days, we um, it was full of clutter again because we were down there the whole time enjoying the clutter list. My question is this. What would you say to, because mostly parents are going to listen to this, what would you say to a child who's maybe like, you know what, I, don't, I like my room, I don't want to clutter, I don't want to get organized. What would you say to them to encourage them to? I would say, do you have anything that you've liked that you've ever lost? 
they would probably say yes because I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone's lost something. Now I said, well, you might, you might be able to find it because decluttering helps you find a lot of things, makes you feel less stress, and it's just better for everyone. Fantastic. Now, is there any, any, any final thoughts you'd like to share with everyone? You don't have to. Nope. Okay. Is it, what would you like to share about yourself with? I had Claire share about herself. I think I am personally awesome in, in every way. <laughs> and this podcast is, how long? It's like, I, I expected this podcast to be long and boring, but this was like seven minutes long. So, he, Max needs a little convincing to come in. But uh, so you're a sports star. They call you the wall. Anything else people should know? You're nine I, uh, going um, on ten. I played first. Uh, they call me Stretch Armstrong also. Stretch Armstrong. Stretch Armstrong for baseball, the wall for soccer. Yep. Max also stars in another podcast and video. When Yes, you do. When he was oh. much younger and he was three and four and Claire talked about. I was, three, I, was, I was three and four. You were three and Claire was four. See, this is. He said three and four. Yeah, so this is what I put up with on a regular basis. But anyway, we talk about the basic no. organizing principle of everything has a home. No, it's not. I'm just being nice to you today. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Max, for coming on. You're welcome. All right, say bye to everyone. Bye. Hope you enjoy Emma if she comes. Takeaways from today's podcast from Claire. First, have give your child a 10 to 15 minute break or incentive. It might be to be able to play football outside, to watch little TV. Yeah, I would say so. My parents wouldn't be very happy if I said that though. So you that's can okay. say that for me. I'm auntie, so that's yeah. okay. We can say it. The second takeaway from today's podcast is that if you don't need something or use it, let it go. You can do an awesome yard sale to add to your collection or donate it to charity for someone who really needs it. And finally, today's last takeaway, we're at the beach. It's a little more casual on this podcast, and sometimes you have to go with the flow, is that your room or area where you declutter and get organized will feel awesome afterwards, correct? Yes, very. All right, everyone, you've heard it from Claire Cyber. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Yes. Ready to clear clutter and share your gifts with the world? The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So what step will you take today? Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of our 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter. Julie Caraccio provides coaching, professional organizing and speaking, organizing classes, positive affirmations, and her unique How to Declutter Your Life course. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Subscribe to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out and join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m.